it's just a good practice we all have to practice the things we want to do it's not just going to go to not doing anything five day in the gym girly gym shirt like i think that's i think that's crazy i think that's crazy that's a crazy jump and it's unsustainable you're gonna fall so consistent slow build ramp it up yeah transforming throughout life so I talk a lot about systems productivity womanhood life lessons health and fitness and all of my late 20s journeys well today is actually my first day going back to work in person I generally work from home but the new semester has started so things are kicking into gear I've been struggling my way back to consistency over winter break because of that long pause I wasn't very consistent but I've slowly done better and better each week so I'm really ready to keep my progress going for 2024. So now that I'm going back in person it will require a little more work-life balance on my part and I'm doing all I can to stay on top of my habits and my priorities throughout this semester. My PhD is a priority but so is my fitness journey. I've lost 50 pounds so far and I'm aiming to lose about 10 to 20 more throughout this year. So I'm implementing these five habits that will keep me successful in my fitness journey no matter what. So I wanted to share with y'all the five habits that I'm practicing to keep me consistent and seeing progress no matter what. I'm currently about to go ahead and get my day started and go to the gym, but I have to start off with journaling in my bullet journal, and I also have a Notion template that I use now. So I've looked at today's to-do list. I know what I need to do. I know what time I need to do it. So let's get to it. Did not mean to rhyme. <laughs> Did not mean to rhyme, baby, but if it happened like that, it happened like that.
shifting every single day I internally feel big changes on the way I am aligning with opportunities for my highest good my life is rapidly and beautifully transforming unexpected and expected blessings flow to me now I'm attracting money like water it flows to me I am at the vibration of miracles the universe loves to see me in love with life so I step into my future with boldness. I have no fear for my future. Only excitement. Only excitement. Only excitement. So the first habit that I'm practicing to make sure that it becomes a successful habit in 2024 is getting enough sleep. And that starts with writing down when I go to sleep, when I wake up. I recommend always just starting off with doing it for a week. Just start for a week right down at night to take a picture when you get in your bed. Take a picture when you get out of your bed in the morning. And then you can see, oh, I took this picture at 9.05. So I was probably asleep by 9.30. And I woke up at 8 a.m. And I would do that every day for a week and just see if you don't have like an Apple Watch or whatever because I don't wear mine in bed. But that's how I see like how much sleep am I getting? I just write down every day for a week and I can see that, oh, I'm up till 2 a.m. during the weekdays or I'm actually not getting nearly as much sleep as I should be getting. In order to see any body progress, in order to see any mental clarity, like sleep helps with everything. It is how we rest and recover and our brain has to recover from the previous day's work. Our body has to recover from the previous day's exertion. Our gut and our hormones have to recover from the rise and fall of what we ate and did yesterday. Like everything needs time to recover. And if you give your body this much time to recover versus this much, what do you, you think will be better for you in the long term? I think we all know the answer. So yeah, I recommend doing this in that way. If you want to look at your total, if you want to look at like a final number, I would average those seven days, those seven days of sleep time of sleep and average. How much did I, did I get? <laughs> how much sleep did I get throughout this week? And if your weekly average isn't seven, we know what to work on next week. Yes. <laughs> Let me go grab my tea. <laughs> <Get dressed. laughs>
I've been a little ashy. I know it's winter and it's not an excuse, but damn, I'm gonna get better ready. on my phone of the fact that it's glute day i have it as a reminder task on my calendar and today is glutes and hammies day and it reminds me every day at 9 a.m that i have to work out today and when i press it it has inside of it the workout it has the workout inside of it so that way i just pull up when i get to the gym i got reminded i go to the gym i do it i check it it's completed yeah baby oh but so that means i need to go is my point which means i gotta make my breakfast and get going but before i finish my pre-gym ritual i've been drinking this morning tea way more often now i've been doing it in the morning and at night it's actually feeling really good but as far as the second choice i'm making right now is literally choosing movement every single day of some type of form whether that's doing my daily yoga flow or going on my daily hour walk or going to the gym. Choosing movement feels like an opportunity to express self-love. It gives me a chance to look in the mirror if I'm in the gym. It gives me a chance to connect to my mind and my body and nature if I'm walking. It gives me the chance to breathe and ground myself if I'm doing yoga. Like movement is a treat to me. It's an opportunity for self-love. So now that I'm like, back consistent when i think about going to the gym i'm like oh yay i get to go like be there with myself it just feels like an opportunity to show myself some love and i will need all the love i can get from anyone and everywhere don't we all so i have been, have been choosing movement in that way and i think a very great starting point for anyone trying to have a healthy lifestyle is to start with walking truly i would suggest going walking every day for 30 days, 31 days, a month, like uh, at least a month of every day of just walking. I personally in 2023 did, in the summer it was 30 minutes a day. And then I got like to a mile and a half. And so then I was like, all right, two miles a day. And then that got me to like 45 minutes. And then it was like, okay, 45 minutes a day. And I did that for like a month. And then that was okay and I started doing an hour a day. And then I got tolerable with that, figured out ways to make that less boring. And then after I did an hour a day, now I'm like, my current focus is intensity so i'm still doing just an hour but now i'm like can i speed up can i can i walk more miles in one hour than before so right now my hour is either two and a half miles or three miles but i want to get that down to like three to four miles in an hour so that's my goal for the first quarter with my walking and every time i'm consistent with just walking every day 30 minutes to an hour then i get this i get to a point where i'm like this feels good. I'm looking good. I'm sleeping better. Let me go to the gym. And I feel like that just happens naturally. Like the more you start to move your body and see changes, you're like, oh, what else can I do? And that's just what happened for me. Like I started walking up and down my street and I was doing wonders. I started walking and doing yoga. Wonders. Walking yoga. Gym. Wonders. And now I'm just building my confidence in those three things. And now I know how to do yoga. I know how to go to the gym. I know what routes and what music I like listening to on my walks. Those things have become habits for me and it all started with just 30 days of walking so i implore everyone looking to live a healthy lifestyle to choose movement as self-love once a day if you can don't have to leave your house yoga can be done right here on the floor so let me go make me some food let me go make me some food so i can eat before the gym i personally don't work out fasted because that's one of my excuses is I'll be halfway through and then I'll, my stomach will growl and then I'll leave. So instead of dealing with that, I'm just gonna eat something before and bring something with me. That way if I feel that Let me just eat something real quick. You know, let me just eat something real quick and I'll be good. That's what I recommend those 30 days. 
and it'll also just help you build some confidence build some confidence in being able to move it'll build some confidence in consistency like oh i've been able to do this for this long i could do whatever i want for this long let me try something else just building confidence and showing yourself that you can show up will change your life it will change your life it will change your life and this is also the daily hour walks are also just a great time a great opportunity to make time for movement in your day a lot of people have the excuse of uh, oh, i can't i can't you know fit in an hour every day to do this okay do you have 10 minutes after you eat lunch to just walk five minutes down the street five minutes back and then do that after breakfast lunch and dinner 30 minute walk you know like figuring out if you start out with walking how to fit that in and then you figure out how to make more time for that and then time for this and it's just a good practice we all have to practice the things we want to do it's not just going to go to not doing anything five days in the gym girly gym shirt woo. like i think that's i think that's crazy i think that's crazy that's a crazy jump and it's unsustainable you're gonna fall so consistent slow build uh, ramp it up yeah ramp it up to this motherfucking kitchen girl i gotta go oh. anywho's i have to resume my music i literally cannot move without music so We both freaking just try shit. Okay, you woke up mad at me. Go eat and brush your teeth. Mm -mm -mm. grateful for picking up I plan out my meals weekly in my bullet journal and in notion where I just sit down Saturday Sunday night and I say breakfast lunch and dinner for five seven days and it's a lot easier than I feel like you might assume it to be because I literally or at least to me I repeat meals so like I might choose three things for each area and then I just 
every other day <laughs> is how I feel mine out but I think a very great starting point before getting to just like that if you don't know if you like certain foods is prepping just breakfast for the week Saturday sit down and write one breakfast idea every day for a week and commit to that I have my breakfast or my meals of the day on my refrigerator I have my options right here <laughs> in the front of my kitchen I have like I said in my notion in my bullet journal so I don't want that decision fatigue of what what will meet my calories what will meet my protein what blah, 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 blah. I don't want to figure that out I don't like figuring shit out I have plenty to figure out in my day so I went ahead and planned what I was going to eat and I think if we start with just planning out breakfast for seven days not all meals just breakfast it will naturally lead to wanting to do better throughout the day like you planned a healthy breakfast and then for lunch you're like oh maybe I'll get a salad instead of a burger at this restaurant or at my cafe or maybe for dinner I'll do this instead of that since I'm like I'm having such a good day so far you know and then that'll repeat and then suddenly you want to plan breakfast and lunch or maybe just lunch or whatever just like plan out one of your meals for a week and see how that impacts your choices and how that impacts your choices for what you eat so I plan out my full week's meals they're in my like I said in all of my places and then every night I just update on my whiteboard what is tomorrow's foods that way when I <laughs> come to the to the board I was about to do one thing and then I said protein smoothie and I was like all right okay <laughs> so listen to yourself Quinda you already thought this through you already thought this through don't don't reinvent the wheel every fucking day no need but yes I'm gonna drink my smoothie in the car and I'm gonna head out. I have to put on my. Let me show you actually. Hold on. <laughs> it's cold as fuck, y'all. Can you believe when I bought this in what 2021? I bought this and I, I literally hid it in my closet. I was like, it's so big and it's you know it's, it's not big. It's like too big for my body. And and then I I, I was like, it's the, the texture. I just had so many complaints. I can't even remember them all now because I love her, but. I had so many complaints because I bought it for over $100 off H&M and it just seemed like really big. But now, two years later, I'm like, I see why this was like 160 Like, it's thick, girl, so that you can wear layers under it. I can put on two more layers of long sleeves and be good in this motherfucker. Oh my gosh. And then even just without it, it is a, a whole two layers by itself. It got pockets. It's brown. One of my favorite colors. Like yeah i i was it was the beginning of my invest in expensive things little trip because i i normally did not before then but i was like i need a winter coat and i should buy one that costs a good amount of money so that's what i did and i'm so grateful because it's go <sighs> lifestyle habit and mind style habit that I have been practicing is identifying my real motivation and identifying my artificial motivation. I do think that in order to stay focused it's important to have content and pictures and visions of what we're trying to create and to determine what those things are why we are doing what we're doing and what that looks like for us. I think both are important the why and the what. So I think we need both. In order to have real motivation, we have to choose a progress method. 
whether that's journaling or taking pictures every day or measuring yourself once a week or having a habit tracker to see your consistency there should be some kind of progress method and this will honestly naturally act as real motivation and that's what's happened for me seeing just small differences from this sunday to last sunday and seeing how i've gone from looking one way in this month to how i looked five months ago seeing those changes is real motivation it's intrinsic motivation it comes from me i'm also motivated by my health and my um, heart health and my the diseases in my family those things also are my real motivation and so i keep those in mind but those are not always enough to stay consistent and keep going in this lifestyle so there must also be artificial motivation and for me that means finding fitness and wellness inspiration on every app i use we're very much so in the digital age and every app that i have i have some kind of fitness inspiration section on youtube that means that i'm subscribed to people like chris huey and games by brains and my own channel to get fitness inspo and on instagram i have a fitness page where i follow you know fitness influencers to see their workouts and their form tips i love eric roberts fitness and other like courtney's page and i follow i also use those pages to bookmark important you know relevant things so that in the morning if i want to scroll on instagram i can scroll through my collections about fitness i also have a podcast that i listen to channels that keep me motivated and focused so that if i'm not feeling it i'll put on a podcast on my way to the gym on my walk on the treadmill and that also includes pinterest i have pinterest boards that keep me aligned if i want to instead of scrolling on twitter i'll scroll on pinterest so whatever app you're using there should be somewhere in there that you have a collection or a some kind of place for inspiration that way you have that lifestyle affirmation you see it's possible you see what you need to do you have it romanticized and it just keeps you focused so that way when you don't feel motivated just because of your personal progress you can still see oh there are other people that live this kind of life and it looks fun and good let me keep it up that works for me and i definitely have been using both to stay consistent i've become a high key a podcast girly and I don't hate it. So. so my specific tip here is definitely to take the time, take an hour and sit and <laughs> take an hour and choose 10 minutes for each app you use. One for Twitter, 10 minutes for Instagram, 10 minutes for whatever. And create those fitness inspiration sections for your artificial motivation. And then take another hour and go through and collect all of your progress photos into one place or your journals or just sit and reflect about how far you have come. I think this is incredibly important for realizing why you have the habits you're trying to form and why you should be sticking to them. It's gotten warmer just a wee bit so I can take off one of my layers I keep this jacket in my car as my extra second layer because I just never know how cold I'll feel outside I keep my apartment really warm so what I think it feels like it may not feel like so I keep this in my car but yes I'm about to go on my walk go ahead right now I'm just gonna do 30 minutes because I have a meeting at like 2 o'clock and it's 12.30 so I just I'm gonna do 30 minutes eat and go to campus back to campus so Trader Joe's chocolate bar oh sorry I bet my car is like making noise huh <laughs> I am just wanted to give my last tip before I go on my walk and finish the rest of my day and that tip is to actually stop making no lists 
like stop making no lists i personally just think a restrictive mindset going towards your goal is just an unattractive way to set a goal i spent a lot of my time up until this point trying to do no junk food for 30 days no soda for this many days no this no that and it was always so discouraging just to like try to count that off i was it was just never successful for me thinking of it in a what i can't do mindset and about two years ago when i started thinking about a addition mindset and adding to my life mindset i started actually making real changes in habits so i've seen i've been seeing a lot of like on social media the 75 hard and all kinds of other like rules and challenges where it's like no this no that no what you no 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 and i mean you know if it works for you i'm not telling you what to do i simply think that starting off from a point of what you need to add to your life instead of what you need to take away will naturally make room for those things to fall off without you having to force yourself into it so for me i started making and lists instead instead of being like no junk food it was let me eat at least two vegetables to my meals let's focus on that instead of like not doing junk food and then the more i started eating vegetables the more full i became and the less i needed junk food and i just didn't eat it as much that happened naturally instead of me being like no i can't have this it doesn't do that i still have it when i want it but i have more of the better things for me similarly instead of being like you know no days off it's let's walk three times a week that's not worried about like if we're not doing this let's make sure we're adding to our lives and it's just been such a more sustainable way to do my goals so instead of thinking about all the things you hate about your life and that you want to stop doing think about the things you want to add to your life and make that list and choose one thing per week per month per whatever frequency and try it that way and see if those no's naturally fall off anyway because there's only so much room in our lives for so much like you don't have room in your stomach for all the junk food and all the healthy food you don't have the room in your stomach for all i mean all this the room in your mind for all of the drama and all of the success like you don't have room for both so as you focus in more and add more of the positives the negatives don't have room to be anywhere there's no space for them so uh, this has helped me get to where i am and it's been way more sustainable from this mindset and it's how i continually add new habits how i'm now drinking my tea and doing my morning routine it all came from just adding one new step at a time and then slowly three steps in one off another step another off like that's just how it's worked for me and i definitely recommend that as a starting point for anyone trying to live a healthy lifestyle this is supposed to be for the rest of forever i want to be hot and healthy and glowy for the rest of forever it doesn't stop when i graduate it doesn't stop when i become a this successful person it doesn't stop when i get married right to this I want to always be this way so that means I have to always think about ways to improve my life I have to always think about ways to to make sure that I am making time for what's important to me that I'm prioritizing my health and my happiness because how else are we supposed to function if we are not actually well so <laughs> those are my five tips for having a sustainable healthy lifestyle in 2024 and forever I just think slow starts are way more sustainable and are really good are really essential keys for long-term growth small small changes i know for a fact make big differences and just try either one of these any of these five this coming week and let me know how it goes for you literally it's sunday these next five six seven days try this out and comment below how it went for you what you learned about yourself and what you're going to improve on next week and you can read my cues review to see how it went for me and i'll see you in my next video let me go on my walk baby Going on my walk, baby. Gotta get in my steps.
So I think these five tips are great starting points for building a sustainable wellness journey. I started with just these changes three years ago and now I have a daily fitness routine that's kept off 50 plus pounds. So if you need a tool to help you stay on track with these tips, check out my free Better Choices Planner. It's a digital iPad planner that you can download in the description box. And if you need an accountability buddy for staying consistent, join our We're Productive People Club. We meet weekly to connect and reset together for some community accountability and support. Otherwise, I hope I see you in my next video. Bye, friend.